everybody, welcome back to Waggleby. As usual, I'm your host Heather, and today I want to talk to you guys about the prickly pear cactus. What you see in front of me right now is the plains prickly pear, and today I'm going to go over a quick list of several prickly pear that you can find out there in North America. So let's take a look. Meet the brown spined prickly pear. A common prickly pear, especially in the Sonoran and Chihuahuan deserts, across Arizona to Texas and even up into Utah. It's a spreading cactus with not much of a trunk and not in clusters or tight mounds like the hedgehogs we've seen out here. The cactus chains that it forms as one prickly pear grows off of the previous one are made up of pads that are typically about five inches in size. A medium-sized prickly pear with flat, reddish, long spines, yellow flowers, and plump, juicy, red to purple edible fruits. It grows best in coarse, well-drained soils, so you typically find it a bit above the desert valley floor, at elevations around 2,000 feet or higher, all the way up to 8,000 feet. Next up, the pancake prickly pear. Growing up to around seven feet tall, this guy is like a prickly pear tree, with trunk and all. You can find the pancake prickly pear all over the Southwest, especially in places like Arizona and Texas and even Southern California, at elevations of around two up to 6,000 feet. It has orangish yellow flowers, followed by fleshy gray purple fruits, and it grows on steep rocky slopes, but a few do grow in the Arizona flats. Since this prickly pear does look quite different than the others, you'll have little trouble knowing it when you see it. Did you know prickly pears aren't always characteristically green? Some are a blue-green, but some are even purple. The Santa Rita prickly pear, named for the mountains where it's found, often has a purplish tinge. This coloration is caused by a pigment known as beta-cyanin, a product the plant creates in response to stresses like cold or drought or a lack of water access. This one pictured here is growing on the side of a cliff where water has been diverted. Plus, it's at elevation of over 4,000 feet in the Arizona highlands in winter. Notice also this cactus has few to no spines. There's also a purple prickly pear that's similar to the Santa Rita prickly pear, however, the purple prickly pear is more likely to be shorter and have long spines. And the Santa Rita prickly pear is more represented in Arizona, while the purple prickly pear is better represented in Texas. Next up, the Plains prickly pear. A common sight on arid plains of the Colorado Plateau, it has several varieties and hybridizations. It can be found from low elevations from two to 10,000 feet, but is most common around three to 7,000 feet in California, Texas, up into Utah and beyond. Its range is very wide reaching, be it the altitude or latitude. It's spiny and hardy at these inhospitable hot cold extreme climates with relatively smaller pads and orange showy flowers of colors from yellow to pink as well and its fruits are dry at maturity. A similar variety is the tuberous prickly pear which also grows in arid plains is small and low to the ground. It's named after its occasional large tuberous roots which accompany the typical fibrous prickly pear roots although not all species have such roots. It also has flowers that are ranging from yellow to red, or both, and grows from Arizona to the eastern United States at elevations around two to 9,000 feet. It differs from the plains prickly pear because it has juicy edible fruits and is less spiny. It's easy to recognize the beaver tail thanks to its large, spineless, bluish green pads and big showy fuchsia flowers and humans' affinity for planting it around southwest parks and homes. This, along with the plains prickly pear, also has fruits that are dry at maturity. You can find it from California to Utah, all the way up to 9,000 feet. Yet another spineless prickly pear is the blind pear. However, its range is restricted to the Big Bend region of Texas. It's relatively tall with clusters of large pads around six inches that are green, and have a tinge more yellowish during drought. They also have yellow flowers. One of the more interesting characteristics of this prickly pear is the origin of its name. 
That is, the many fine reddish glochids, or mini spines, that were reported to blind animals like cattle. So cowboys called it the blind pair. Lastly, we have the Engelmann's prickly pear. This is a very common prickly pear in the southwest U.S., found from the desert floor to the low mountains. It has large pads up to 12 inches in size and down-pointing, light, flattish spines. It can also form large mounds several feet across and several feet tall. It has yellowish flowers, which are followed by large, edible, reddish-purple fruits. So there you have it, folks, a handful of prickly pear cactus. All of these prickly pears belong to the genus Apuntia, which includes prickly pears and choyas, all in the cactus family, of course, and they generally grow in arid regions, especially in those southwest deserts like the Sonoran, Chihuahuan, and parts of the Mojave and Great Basin deserts. But you can also find many of them from the northern to eastern stretches of the United States as well, and similar species around the world, some of which were introduced. Many of them produce edible fruits and pads. If you're interested in harvesting prickly pear, Please check out my other videos here on the Wagglebee channel to learn how to eat cactus fruits and pads. Prickly pears are also foraged by animals like native bighorn sheep and javelinas, but many are resistant to deer grazing. They also support specific insect hosts such as moths and symbiotic relationships necessary for the survival of us all.